Doing calculations where you have to dilute or concentrate a solution is just a variation on any other concentration calculation where you convert between molarity and moles and volume. So we'll do a couple of examples where we have to dilute and concentrate a solution. And we'll do an example where we have to combine two solutions containing a common ion. So for our first example, we have 25 milliliters of 3 molar sodium chloride solution, and we're going to add 60 milliliters of water and try to find the new concentration of sodium chloride. The big thing here is we just have to track the moles. That is all we do for diluting and concentrating solutions. So we have initially a container that has 25 milliliters of water with 3 molar sodium chloride. And what we're going to do is we're going to dump in 60 more milliliters of water. So that gives us a total of 85 milliliters and our molarity will be something. Hopefully it will be smaller. The big point here is that the number of moles of sodium chloride that are in that solution haven't changed. It's still in the same container. The only difference is that there's more water, so we have a lower concentration. So what we do is we have to find out how many moles were in that original 25 milliliter sample. So what we do is we say we have 25 milliliters and every liter has a thousand milliliters so we can work out how many liters we have. That works out to be 0 0.02500 liters. So now we have a volume of our original solution and we have a molarity. So we say 0 0.02500 liters times 3.00 molar or moles per liter. The liters will cancel and we'll be left with a value in terms of moles of sodium chloride. 0 0.0750 moles of sodium chloride are in that original solution. Then when we add our solutions together, our new volume is 85 milliliters. So we have moles of sodium chloride and a new total volume. So we can say 0 0.0750 moles of sodium chloride divided by our new volume in liters. 85 milliliters is 0 0.08500 liters and our new concentration is 0 0.882 molar sodium chloride. Our second example involves taking one liter of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide and boiling it down to 0.3 liters and trying to find the new concentration of sodium hydroxide. So this is almost exactly the same question that we just did. The only difference is instead of diluting things, we've concentrated it. We've made it have a higher concentration. So we start with our container again, which has 0 0.500 molar sodium hydroxide in one liter. And we're going to stick it over a Bunsen burner, a terribly drawn Bunsen burner, and we're going to boil that solution until eventually we have a smaller volume. So our concentration is unknown again and we do know the new volume is 0 0.30 liters. The big takeaway here is again, we're tracking the moles. The actual number of moles of sodium hydroxide haven't changed, but the amount of water has changed. So what we do is we say, we have 1.00 liters and 0 0.500 molar sodium hydroxide initially, which means we had initially 0 0.500 moles of sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and when we boiled off 0.7 liters of water, what we ended up with was 0.3 liters of water. So our new concentration is 0 0.500 moles divided by 0 0.30 liters, and we have a concentration of 1.7 molar sodium hydroxide. Our third example is a little bit different. So in this case, we have 10 milliliters of 0.3 molar sodium chloride solution, and we add to that 30 milliliters of 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid. And we want to know what is the new concentration of chloride ions after we've mixed those things together. And the big takeaway here is, again, track the moles. We're looking for the concentration of chloride ions, not for the concentrations of any of those compounds. And both of those compounds are strong electrolytes, so they split up 100% in solution, which means we know the concentration of chloride ions in the sodium chloride solution. We have 10 milliliters of 0.3 molar chloride ions. The sodium chloride and chloride ions are in a one-to-one -one ratio and it's a strong electrolyte, so it splits up 100 percent 
their concentrations are the same. Our HCl is a similar situation. We have 0.2 molar HCl, which means we have 0.2 molar Cl minus ions. So we have 40 mill 30 milliliters of HCl, so we have 0.2 molar Cl minus ions. And what's going to happen is we're going to mix those solutions together, and the chloride from one and the chloride from the other are going to be poured into a single new container or poured into one of the individual containers. It doesn't matter. The big takeaway here is, again, we have now 10 mils plus 30 mils, so we have 40 milliliters of solution. And now we have a concentration that's not known to us. But what we can do is we can find out the number of moles from each of those original solutions, and we can add those moles together and then divide by the total volume. So we have 10 milliliters, which is 0 0.0100 liters times 0 0.300 molar, and we can find that we had 0 0.003 zero zero moles of chloride ion from the sodium chloride solution. We have 0 0.0300 liters of HCl times 0 0.200 molar, which means we have 0 0.0600 moles of Cl- coming from the HCl. When we mix them together, we're combining those chloride ion amounts. So we end up with 0 0.00300 plus 0 0.0600 moles which adds up to give you 0 0.00900 moles of Cl- in total. Our total volume was 40 milliliters. 40.0 milliliters is 0 0.0400 liters. And if we want to find the new concentration, we say 0 0.00900 moles of chloride ions divided by 0 0.0400 liters and we end up with a concentration of 0.225 molar chloride ions.